So, so far our player can move left and right and gravity exists. We can fall from the, uh, wherever the position is, fall onto the platform and fall onto the floor. So we can move left, right and down. It's time for the final direction and that of course is up. So now we're going to be able to allow the player to jump. Now, one of the things that we need to bear in mind here is that it's not as simple as just simply saying, if we press the up arrow, then change the Y position by 10 blocks or something. Because what could happen is if we press the up arrow, we will jump up 10 blocks. But what happens if at that point, before we start falling, the player hits the up button again, we'll jump up another 10 blocks. And then just as we're about to fall, we hit up again, we jump another 10 blocks. Effectively, we're flying. Uh, the player can just simply keep hitting, uh, spam hitting the up button, and the player will just keep going up and up and up and up and up. And then eventually the player can just simply uh, glide across all of the obstacles and defeat the whole purpose of the game. So what we need to do is have a way of making sure that the game knows if we're jumping. So it needs to know if we are jumping and if we are, it will lock the ability to jump. So this is a special kind of variable that we're going to use. So far, speed X and speed Y are simply storing numbers and those numbers are constantly changing and they can be more or less anything we want. In fact, there'll be fractions as well at some point. There'll be positives, there'll be negatives, there'll be all sorts of things. But we want now to have a kind of variable which will only be one thing or the other. We're either jumping or we're not jumping. If we are jumping, we want to lock the ability to jump. And if we're not jumping, we want to unlock it. So a kind of variable that's going to be one thing or the other is what we call a Boolean variable. A Boolean variable can be true or false, one or zero, yes or no. It can be just one of two things. So let's make a variable and I'm going to call this lock. And this variable will tell the computer whether or not we're jumping. And if lock is set to zero, it means that we're not jumping. So let's put that in. Uh, in at the beginning so set lock to zero so we're not jumping at the beginning we're not jumping when the game starts so that means that we would be allowed to jump but as soon as we are jumping we set lock to one and that will make sure that if we try jumping again it's going to ignore us uh, until we finish jumping we've hit the platform again and then we can set lock back to zero so let's now go back down to the beginning and we can find the uh, section for Y. There's the X stuff just here. And this is the first line, this blue line here, change Y by speed Y. So we know that we're going to be working in this section here. That's where the new code needs to be. So um, if we're touching the platform, then we know we're going to be able to jump or we should be able to, to jump. So if we're touching the platform where we're landed, we're on the ground, we should be able to jump. If we're not touching the platform, then either we're falling uh, or we're jumping. So if we're touching the platform, this is where we can put in our lock code here. So we uh, change Y by speed Y times minus one. We set speed Y to zero. Now we can put in a bit of extra code inside this section. So remember we have this if block here, if we're touching the platform, then do this code, which I've just pulled out here for a moment. Otherwise we do that code. So what we're doing is we're adding a bit of code to these two lines, which were in the top section of this if block here. So just make sure that you're putting the new code inside this top section of the if touching platform. And what we actually need to do is ask another question. Um, we need to know if lock is set to zero. So if lock is zero, well, we'll be allowed to jump. So let's go to control and grab an if block. Now, here we don't need two possible options. We're only interested in whether or not we can jump. If we can't jump, well, nothing to do. We just don't do anything. Uh, so we only need to do one thing here if we can jump. So let's put this if block underneath Remember these two lines of code here, let's put it underneath that set speed y to zero. 
So it's still inside this block here. Look very, very carefully uh, when you're putting this code in. So if what? Well, if lock is zero, so if lock is equal to zero. So there's our equals in the operator section. Let's pop that in there. Grab our lock variable just here. Oh, and I can see it's got a, a little tick next to it. It's uh, displayed over here. Let's uh, untick that. So if lock is zero, so remember this Boolean variable is either zero or it's one. If it's zero, it's not locked, we can jump. So if lock is zero, then we know we're going to allow the user to jump. What's the next question? Do they want to jump? Have they pressed the up arrow? Uh, obviously, we don't jump automatically just because we can. We need to know whether or not the player is touching the up arrow. And uh, at the top here, we've got the uh, if right arrow pressed. We'll do that. If the left arrow pressed, do that. So right here, we need to know if the up arrow is pressed. So let's get yet another if block. There it is. And this if block is going to go inside this gap here. So if lock is zero, then if we have pressed the up arrow, let's go to sensing for that. So if, uh, where is it, key pressed. So if the up arrow is pressed, what do we do? Well, there are two things we need to do here. We first of all need to uh, increase our vertical speed. Um, so we're, we're actually jumping up. So we need to change our vertical speed. That's the first thing. And the second thing, of course, is we need to set this lock to one, because if they've pressed the up arrow, we are jumping. We are therefore not allowed to jump again, not until we are no longer touch, uh, until we are rather touching the platform. So let's do uh, the first thing. Uh, first of all, we need to change speed Y. So let's, uh, or set rather, uh, let's set speed Y. Now, this is something you can play with. Um, basically, this number is going to be how high you can jump. I'm going to put 10 in there, uh, which gives you a reasonable jump. If you don't want to jump quite as high, then you can reduce that number. If you want to make it feel as though you're on the moon, then you can make that number much larger. Uh, play around with an experiment, see what you feel uh, looks right for you. So that's going to uh, change their vertical speed. So that'll give them a boost vertically. And we also need to set lock to one because we are now jumping. So we don't allow them to uh, jump again. Uh, so that's almost complete. There's one more line of code that we need. Um, so far, we have got a line that sets lock to one, but we don't have a line, apart from at the very beginning of the program, we don't have a line that sets lock back to zero. So lock needs to be set back to zero once we are touching the platform. So at the top here, we've got if touching platform, then we do all this changing of speed and working out whether we're jumping else. So this block here is what happens if we uh, are not touching the platform. So if we are uh, falling or jumping or something. So at this point uh, here, we're falling down. So minus one means we're falling down. So if we're falling, we can't possibly be jumping because that would be going the other way. So let's set lock back to zero. So set lock to zero. There we go. That's the code complete at this point. So let's go full screen and click the green flag. So there's our player falling down, moving left and right. And if I press the up arrow, you can see him jumping. And what you might better tell is that as he falls, he kind of decelerates a bit as well. So uh, let's test this out. Let's see if I jump over here. Can I get up onto that ledge? Uh, yes, so I can get onto there nice and easily. Can I get onto that one? Just uh, oops, I missed that jump completely. I can't quite get up there. Uh, and I can't, oh, I can get onto there. So what you need to do is this now, you need to play your game basically. Oh, I can make that jump. You need to uh, play the game once your characters can move in like this uh, and work out um, whether your game is playable. Where do you want the player to start from and where do you want them to end up? I was imagining them uh, starting over here and having a portal up here. But uh, quite clearly, there is no way in which I'm going to be able to get uh, from there up to there. That's just impossible. So I'll need to redesign this section around here. I'll need to uh, 
cut this in a little bit perhaps put a ledge on the uh, left section here and maybe even put a little um, ledge sticking out here so I can jump up onto that so this is where you can change the uh, level to do that very simple just click over on the platform sprite head over to costumes uh, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to make it a bit easier so let's have a look at this top section here so we need to get rid i think of some of that bit there let's delete that let's draw in black a ledge that we can use sticking out here and uh, let's also have one sticking out there now whether that's possible or not i don't know so once again we're going to have to go back and play the game it's a terrible task but someone has to do it so there we are let's jump onto that there we are see i can make that now in fact it's almost uh too easy um that was that was fairly straightforward that so i think it might be that i'll need to make that a little bit more difficult uh obviously the start position is going to be changed as well uh but there we are i can clearly do that entire level now so that's the start position up 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 just onto there onto there and up to there there we go of course, you want your first level to be fairly easy. You don't want to put the user off playing the game just because the first level is impossible. What you want to do is make sure the first level just guides them to the, the basic principles. How does it work? What, is, what, what goes on? What's the point of it? And then as the levels become more and more difficult, uh, that's where the challenge comes in. So make sure that your player can jump. And once the player can jump, as I say, you can move in all directions. Now start editing your level make the level just difficult enough to make it a challenge but make sure that it's possible and when you've done that uh, we'll start to have a little look at the portal and how we can move from one level to the next